A guide to growing beets. This root vegetable has a brilliant bright color and is packed with a ton of essential nutrients. Aside from being a delicious addition to salads and other dishes, pickled beets are a great way to enjoy this veggie year round. And they're not just a great food staple, their juice is often used as a natural dye. Beet varieties. Baby beet, a miniature variety that grows a smooth skinned round red root early on in its growth cycle unlike immature full-sized larger varieties. It has a sweet root, green leaves, and red stems and veins. The roots are even small enough to stem whole. Boro, a sweet variety with a medium deep red to purple root, red stems, and green leaves. This is quite possibly the sweetest variety of beet. Bull's blood, this heirloom variety is harvested for its leaves as salad greens, though its small red roots are sweet and edible too. Bull's blood is distinguishable by its deep red leaves and stems. Chioggia. Named after a town in Italy, this sweet variety is known for its green stems and pink roots with their characteristically striped insides. Cylindra. Like its name suggests, this variety has a cylindrical shape instead of the more typical round shape. It has the classical beet red roots and is sweet in flavor. Cylindra has green leaves with green to red stems. Detroit, a super sweet red rooted variety with red stems and green leaves. Harvesting this variety encourages the growth of any remaining plants. Early Wonder, this is a dual purpose variety with delicious roots and leaves. The leaves are green and taller than most, about 18 inches with red to pink stems. Golden. Golden beets have a mild sweet flavor and are known for their golden orange roots with bright yellow interiors. They have green stems and foliage. Red Ace. Known for its sweet and tender red roots, Red Ace has robust tops with green leaves and red stems and veins. White, Albino, or Avalanche. The variety name depends on the seed company. This is a sweet beet with a rich flavor. Stems are green and the roots are round and white. A bonus to this variety is that it doesn't bleed when cooked. Since beets are shallow root vegetables, they thrive best when directly sown because their roots will develop quickly. Their ideal soil temperature for germination is 50 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 to 30 degrees Celsius, and they need darkness to sprout. Then, after they've emerged, they prefer either full sun or some partial shade. Beets also like it best when air temperatures are between 40 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 4.4 to 35 degrees Celsius. Beets shouldn't be sown or transplanted until after the threat of frost is gone. When it comes to soil pH, beets prefer a neutral to slightly acidic soil with a pH level between 6.0 to 7.5. Beets do not grow well in hard clay soils, but they can tolerate soils with low fertility levels. Beets grow best in a spot with full sun and well-draining loamy soil. Then, while the soil is still cool, 50 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, weeds and rocks should be removed from the area, and the soil should be amended, depending on what it needs. Add some organic material, as well as an NPK fertilizer to improve the beet's growth. Mix them into the soil and level the top with a rake. Sowing. Beet seeds should be planted in rows that are 12 to 18 inches, 30 to 45 centimeters apart, with seeds 2 to 4 inches, 5 to 10 centimeters apart, and about half an inch, 1.25 centimeters deep. Seeds should take about 5 to 12 days to germinate when soil conditions are ideal. Thinning. Beet seed balls actually contain multiple seeds, which is why they need a little extra thinning. Once the seeds have germinated and seedlings are about two inches, five centimeters tall, thin the rows so that the beets are about three to six inches, 7.5 to 15 centimeters apart. Watering. Beets need a lot of water. They should get a deep watering directly after sowing 
and the beets shouldn't be allowed to dry out in between being watered. It's important to keep beets watered during dry spells so that their growth isn't interrupted, which will also prevent any interior growth rings. On average, beet plants need about one inch of water per week. As well, when using an overhead watering system, beets should be watered in the morning so that their leaves have enough time to dry off. That way it helps prevent diseases from festering. Note, it's also important to avoid using certain tools around beets that could damage their roots, like weeding and or harvesting tools. Use an NPK fertilizer that has higher amounts of phosphorus and potassium than it does nitrogen. Apply this fertilizer to the soil while dressing the bed, ahead of planting. Then, apply a 1 to 2 inch, 2.5 to 5 centimeter layer of mulch to help maintain soil moisture and prevent competition with weeds. Keep any mulch away from the base of the beet plants to prevent diseases. Apply this mulch either after germination or after transplanting. Transplanting Best Practices Beets are most successful when sown directly in the ground, but transplanting is possible. Here's how to do it. Step 1. Sow beet seeds indoors about 5 to 6 weeks before the last frost. Use the average time from the past few years. Step 2. Plant seeds half an inch, 1.25 centimeters deep, with three to four seeds per inch. Step three, water the seeds after planting, and don't let the soil dry out before it's time to transplant. Step four, find a sunny area for the seedlings so that they can get lots of direct sunlight. Step five, start the hardening off process about a week before transplanting. When the weather is warm and sunny, simply bring the beet seedlings outside Place them in full shade, then bring them back inside overnight. Repeat this process for a couple of days, and it will help adjust the beets to their new environment without shocking them. Step six, bring the seedlings outside, but this time place them in partial shade that will also get some direct sunlight. Continue to bring them back inside overnight and repeat this process for a couple of days. Step seven, now, bring the seedlings outside and place them in direct sunlight for several hours, leaving them outdoors overnight. This step should be repeated for a couple of days. Step eight. The seedlings are now ready for transplant. Typically, they're done once six weeks have passed since seeding. First, amend the soil the same as for direct sowing. Step nine. Transplant seedlings three to six inches, seven to 15 centimeters apart. Thinning is needed with rows that are about 12 to 18 inches, 30 to 45 centimeters apart. Step 10, water deeply after transplanting. Brassicas, corn, garlic, leeks, and lettuce are all great companions for beets. As well, bush beans are a safe bean to plant with beets, adding accessible nitrogen to the soil that beets will need to grow. When grown together, beets and pole beans hinder each other's growth, so they should definitely avoid each other in the garden. Beets can be grown either in a garden bed, a raised bed, or in containers. As long as they have proper nutrients and the right soil depth, beets will do well in any of these options. Beets need about 18 to 24 inches, 45 to 60 centimeters of depth soil plus good drainage, sunlight, and water. Potential pests. Leaf miners. Leaf miners are small dark flies with triangular yellow markings that start out as yellow maggots. They feed on the leaves of a plant, creating irregular round-shaped mines slash tunnels on the leaves. These mines slash tunnels are long and narrow at first, but eventually will become an irregular shaped light colored patch. This damage can stump the growth of plants and cause the leaves of plants to turn yellow and drop. In extreme cases, severely infected seedlings can also die off completely. Here's what to do. 
Monitor plants for signs of these pests, paying close attention to the undersides of leaves. Typically, leaf miners can be removed using a stream of water in the early morning, and certain sprays are good to use too. Natural predators like ladybugs and parasitic wasps can also be attracted to keep leaf miners away. But if these pests are spotted on any plants, simply pick the bugs off and then carefully remove any damaged leaves. Insect netting can also be used to prevent leaf miners from attacking any plants. As well, keep in mind that soils should be plowed under immediately after harvest if any crops were infected with leaf miners. Potential Diseases and Their Solutions Beet Curly Top When plants are infected with this virus, the leaves on the plant will curl inward and cup upward. There will also be swollen veins on the undersides of those affected leaves. The beet's roots might also be stunted and could produce small secondary roots. Here's what to do. Early planting and using well-weeded soil are the best ways to prevent this viral infection. Circospora leaf spot. Small spots with light to tan centers will first appear on the older leaves of plants. As the disease progresses, the centers of these lesions might become brittle and could possibly crack, while older infected leaves can yellow and die. When exposed to high humidity, the lesions will appear fuzzy. Here's what to do. To control the spread of Circospora leaf spot, avoid planting susceptible crops within 100 yards of a previously infected spot. Till any infected crops to bury them, as well as fungal residue, which will prevent the disease from staying in the soil and carrying over into future plantings. However, if any plants are badly infected, pull them out, then hot compost those diseased plants a method that involves burning compost. It's also best to practice crop rotation so that the soil can be protected, which helps prevent continuous disease and pest outbreaks. Also, apply a dense organic mulch, like grass clippings or compost around plants, then water around their base, not overhead. It can also be helpful to spray plants with a baking soda solution, one tablespoon of baking soda 2.5 tablespoons of vegetable oil and a teaspoon of liquid soap to one gallon of water. Keep in mind that baking soda might burn some plant leaves, so it's best to spray one or two leaves first and then check for a reaction before applying every two weeks. Neem oil can also be sprayed on plants, but just make sure not to use it when pollinating insects, like bees and other beneficial insects are around the garden. As well, sulfur sprays or copper-based fungicides can be applied weekly at the first sign of this disease to prevent the disease's spread. These organic fungicides will not kill leaf spot entirely, but they will prevent the fungal spores from germinating and spreading. Fusarium yellows. This is a disease that affects the leaves and roots of a plant. Plants will turn yellow and appear severely stunted with brown, water-soaked roots. This fungus can survive in the soil indefinitely once it's there, and it's usually introduced by infected transplants or contaminated equipment. This disease also favors temperatures between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as moist soils. Here's what to do. Make sure to regularly sanitize any garden tools, plant in disease-free soil, and plant tolerant or resistant varieties when possible. It's also very important to control weeds. Rhizomania. This is arguably the biggest disease threat to sugar beets. Caused by beet necrotic yellow vein virus, BNYVV, the symptoms of this viral disease include yellowed leaves, stunted root growth, roots with a hairy, bearded appearance, and or goblet-shaped roots. The symptoms that are visible will depend on the time of infection, so it's possible to not notice any severe damage. Here's what to do. 
Rhizomania can be prevented by planting beets in well-drained soils to control the soil's moisture levels. As well, early planting, when soil temperatures are below 59 degrees Fahrenheit, or 15 degrees Celsius, will allow the crop to become established before conditions are ideal for the growth of disease. Finally, try to avoid soil compaction, rotate crops, and control any weeds in the garden. Harvesting. Beets will be ready for harvest about 45 days after sowing, give or take a few days depending on the variety that's been planted. Mature beets are ready once their root tops are visible, and those root tops will be about three inches in diameter. Baby beets, on the other hand, will be about one and a quarter inches in diameter. Simply loosen the surrounding soil, then gently pull the root out. Just be careful not to break the root or the stems. Also, when harvesting beets, keep the main taproot, attached to the bulb, intact so that it can prevent any bleeding. Finally, beet greens can also be harvested once they're about 5 inches tall. Storing Beets should then be stored in moist, cool conditions with their leaves and stems removed. They'll keep well in the refrigerator for up to a month and can also be frozen. Another method for storage is to pickle the beets. That way, they can be enjoyed throughout the winter.